Hello and welcome back. Can you believe it? We are already in the middle of February and here in Australia it's the coming to the end of our summer. It's when people come back from summer holidays and go back to work and so you know, the world gets busy, kids go back to school and I always feel that I need a bit of a refresh at this time of the year. Now I often get messages from you saying how do I keep my motivation up and let's face it the last 12 months have been particularly difficult in this area. Because of that, in this video, I'm going to share seven things that I do at this time of the year to lift my motivation and get myself back on track. The first thing I do is I set up my clean slate list. Now, this is simply um, a brain dump of all of the things that are in my head that I really need to do. And I divide them into two lists. One uh, are my destination goals, the projects, the things that take two or more sort of steps to get done and the others are just simply the, the one-off little tasks that you can check off with just one step. So those destination goals and I talked about those in another video so I'll put that up here but uh, I find that these are the things that have that tend to hang over me the most. Now I've got a couple, well a couple that I'm working on. One is I need to get my Australian citizenship. I have lived here for far too many years. My children keep having birthdays and they were both born here. So uh, yeah, I need my Australian citizenship. I put it off too long and I haven't even been putting it off. I've just simply not done it. Uh, I qualify in every way and uh, it, it's just something I need to do. Now the other one on my destination goals, uh, as it were, is to build a habit of swimming again. Now I used to swim a lot when I was a kid and uh, into my 20s but I haven't for a long time. So this is just something I want to do. It's, it's something for me and I've set myself up and I'd started going again to the pool but oops then the pool's got closed down again for a quick lockdown so yeah it's all right it's there and, and I'm set up and I can do it. Now the other part of the list are the tasks and these are those one-off just do it sort of things that you can literally check off in a day might or might take you 15 minutes it might take you 30 it might take you an hour but it's a single task I have a couple of things on this list I have to pull out my sofas and vacuum underneath them I know not a glamorous thing is it that's a task they're boring I know but we do them now the last thing I'd say to do when you are building this clean slate list is to go through it and cross off anything you can delegate to someone else like cleaning the outside of the windows maybe you just find somebody for that maybe cleaning the oven you find somebody for that these are the sorts of things that if you can delegate them because nobody enjoys them and I don't necessarily I can't do them as well as somebody else and then there are the maybe I should maybe I really ought to sorts of things and you don't you don't actually need to do that um, you know, do I need to paint all my pots on the balcony charcoal? Uh, no, I don't. Maybe I, I might, on a flash of inspiration, decide to get out there with a paintbrush one day and it'll be fun and that'll be fine. But it's not really something I need to give myself anxiety over. So I can cross it off. So have a look. Can you delegate it? Is it actually adding to your life and moving you towards your goals? Or is it something you can cross off? Number two is to refresh my morning routine. Now, my morning routine really has to start the afternoon and the evening before. And last night was a good example of this. I didn't get up early this morning because I didn't sleep well last night. I didn't sleep well last night because I had coffee at 3.30 in the afternoon. I can't do that. I simply can't do that. And then, of course, once I'm awake at night, I sit there on my phone or I listen to a story or I watch a video or I send messages to friends who live in different time zones, all of which are bad. But the thing is that I need to make those habits from the night before in order to be able to sleep well and then be able to wake up at an earlier hour. I mean, for me, I think six o'clock is fine. Some people like five, some people get up at four. That's fine, whatever suits them, whatever suits you. If you, an early start might be 8.30. That's not the point. The point is what is right for you. That six o'clock hour for me is really nice. It's still fairly quiet. It's often cool. I get up, I open all the windows, I open the doors, get some fresh air through the house, especially if it's going to be a warmer day. And then I you know, have my lemon water and I can do a little bit of meditation or just sort of center myself for the day. I can read something motivational, go for my walk, come back, do a little bit of you know, Pilates or yoga stretching, something that's gonna loosen me up for the day. 
you know, and then I'm ready to go to the shower and, you know, sort of freshen up. And by then, of course, my bed's made. I'm ready for my coffee. And I can then sit down and go through what, what I've got to do for the day and get on with it. The third thing that I do at this time of the year in particular is that I set aside blocked out little parts of my day when I set my timer for 30 minutes, I go to a hot spot, a place that's cluttered, that isn't organized, that I know needs a bit of attention, maybe a bit of re reorganization. And that's a good amount of time for me. I actually divide it up. I set, first I set the timer for 15 minutes, and that's the go through, sort it. What am I going to do? Put it away somewhere else, tidy it up here, and um, then maybe you know donate something, recycle things. Hopefully the smallest basket will be to put things out in the rubbish. But that's, uh, 15 minutes is fine. The next 15 minutes though is the important bit because this is what completes the cycle. And this is so important in getting things done and, and motivating yourself to do it again. Because after you've done that sort, then the next step is to put away anything that was somewhere, you know, lives somewhere else, clean the area, you know, give it a quick wipe down and put away the things that are meant to live in that area put the donation items into a box or a bag and put them in your car ready to leave the property because you we know what it's like. We go back, don't we? Well, I do sometimes. Sometimes I do go back and things come back out of that donation pile again. Or maybe you've got a maybe, maybe, maybe box and that's fine too as long as you've got somewhere to put it and you know, you're a bit disciplined about not just automatically taking everything back out of it. And then you've got the things that go in recycling and the things that go in the rubbish. Boom, done. That's the end of the next 15 minutes. Maybe, and it's a small block, you know, it's 30 minutes. And that's a really motivating thing to know that you've got that done. Now number four is to make a menu plan. And I love menu planning because for me, it just takes out all the friction from eating well. I know exactly what I will have on any day of the week. I may not have bought all the ingredients. You know, for example, I'm not gonna buy fish on a Monday in order to eat it on a Friday, but I know it's that that's something I need to do. So I just quickly write down seven things that I would like to eat, go through my fridge, my pantry, my, my freezer, perhaps I might even have a couple of meals in there that I can slot in to, to the list. And you know, just say, right, what do I need in order to make these recipes? They're all in my head now. Um, there's nothing super new. Every now and again I do though. I'll find something new and I'll go, hey, this is fun and I'll probably have it far too often and get really sick of it. Number five is to start a memory jar. Now this was new to me. Uh, I'm sure lots of you will know about it, but I didn't. But this is cute. You get a jar, you get a little bowl, you get some sort of container, and you just add in some little post-it notes and a pencil or a pen. And when you think of it, like maybe every day, maybe twice a day, maybe once a week, something good happens and you just jot it down. Something that makes you laugh, something that makes you smile. Jot it down, fold it over, stick it together, write the date on it and pop it in the jar. Now come the end of 2021, I'm going to have a jar full of just little bright moments. These are no major things and I'll go through them and if there's some really special ones, I'll probably pop them down in my journal. But it's really just to remember that there are good things that are happening even when the overall feeling for a time can be a bit flat. Number six is to refresh or start a budget. Now, there are two groups of people out there, and you're both yelling at me at the moment. One group is saying, of course I always budget. I've always budgeted. It's sensible. It's good money management. That's why I'm financially free. Then there's the other group that says, I don't like budgets. They're restrictive. I'm fine. I've got enough money. I don't need to worry about it. And both groups are kind of right. The thing is that coming towards retirement, downsizing, maybe working fewer days a week, you are going to need to know your numbers. And you don't know your numbers if you don't track your spending. In order to do serious planning for the next stages of, you know, the next 20 or 30 years, or if you're 50, it might be 50 years, people keep living over 100 these days. Have you noticed? There was a nun who had just got, had her 117th birthday. I mean, seriously, 117? If you are in this sort of demographic, you know, in your 50s and 60s and older, then you're looking at the time of life when you're going to be perhaps scaling back from your main career. You might be 
taking up something else, you might be going into a business, you might be going into a new hobby, you might be moving. A lot of you, a lot of us are downsizers. And that, that's something that you need to assess where you are financially is a huge part of that. Like, what can I actually afford? Now, you don't know what you can afford if you don't know what you are spending and where you are spending it. I know, I sound like a school teacher, bring it on. But it's just fundamental. And you know, your financial advisor, your investment advisor, these people will ask you for your numbers. So this is a good time. You've got most of the year ahead and you can do that planning. And if you want to uh, learn how I do it, then I've also got a video on that. Number seven is to have a Sunday reset. You could choose a day that works for you. But that's when I do my menu plan and I write my shopping list. And even though I don't go shopping till the Tuesday, I do my weekly budget check-in and if it's the end of the month I just do a quick tally and that's the end of that as well so I've got those two done. Um, you know, I pay any outstanding accounts that are coming up, anything like that. I review my, uh, my goals, I do my list for the week, things that I'd like to get done, what days I'll do them on. Just do a little bit of planning that way to sort of sort out the, the coming week, check any appointments I've got. And then once those taking care of business things are done, then it's time for the nice stuff. Maybe you'll, you know, if you like having a bath, it might be the evening you take a bath, you give yourself a mini pedi, you might put on a face mask or a hair mask, all of those sorts of things. Sit down, um, maybe you choose your, you know, a particular favourite meal to have that evening, and or maybe it is a takeout evening in your house. I mean, whatever it is that you know makes the evening a really nice place, buy a candle if it's your thing watch a movie, watch something you're following on TV, you know, it's one of those series that's on, on Netflix at the moment. Um, you know, that sort of thing, read a book, but be ready and sort of just so you're ready to calm and just slide into the new, new week without any friction. And that's it, that's the end of my list. So I hope that there's something in there that you know, that resonated for you. If you like these sorts of videos, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, come along for another one. And I hope that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, that you're having a lovely week, that you're staying safe and well. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.